Here we are! Aramingo Avenue. History being made before our very eyes. This little stretch of road on Aramingo Avenue. Cars for decades. Generations of families. My father drove down this patch of, uh, patch of road. And what you would always do is you would drive down and you would scrape your muffler. Because the street was really... You see how it's not even? Hello, friend. Welcome to Philadelphia. I'm the captain. Uh, so that's historic. That's a historic thing. My muffler. My father's muffler. My grandmother's co-worker who drove her to work. Uh, she didn't have a car. All those people, their mufflers were scratched by that patch of road. And uh, what we're doing, we're going for a scoop. Oh, that's not how we say it. Let's, you gotta say it. You gotta say it the proper way. Ooh, ooh watch you. Ooh. Yep, going for a scoop. And today, what I plan on doing is showing you some new things happening in my old neighborhood of Port Richmond. Maybe, dare I say, we dip into Fishtown and I'll show you million dollar homes and what goes on near the million dollar homes. Look at this. Da, da, da. Slides. Be careful, folks. This used to be Toys R Us over here. Sort of worked in this building as a sales rep for a toy company. Uh, and then it used to be a Toys R Us, and then it became, uh, whatever the hell it is now, a Burlington Coat Factory. I don't, I don't do Burlington Coat Factories. They just do this thing where they only have one cashier. I just can't do that. Now, this is another thing. History is happening just a hundred yards away from one another. All my life, I grew up around this area in Port Richmond, and I've never... And the rock means never seen anybody park on this side of Gall Street ever. And now, not only are people parking on Gall Street, but they're parking on the pavement of Gall Street. And that's because these are new apartments that were just built. Matter of fact, they're still being built. And this is a very... Um, This shows you how much non-parking these apartment buildings have. Because you can't even park. Because that's not really parking. You can't really legally do that. But, but laws don't exist. But I think it looks like they're building a parking lot. So maybe it's just like a, listen, we're going to be just do this for a bit. Pay us no mind. Yeah, I see. And then, yeah, I think that looks like that's the case. Hey, you can't really. Yeah, they're building the parking lot, so. Yeah. That's nice. For the uh, longest time, this was like a vacant lot. It was used... Um... I think there was an auction house right down the street, and the auction house used that for parking. So funny, growing up, I grew up in this neighborhood. You're going to hear me say that a thousand times. Um, growing up, these houses here on Belgrade Street, these were the new properties. Now, right across the street. Newer construction, apartments, not 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 for sale. You have to rent, and uh, that's crazy. So this neighborhood uh, of Port Richmond, most of the houses are like these houses. These are called row homes. Uh, I live in a type of house like this. It's a row home. Uh, my I have two neighbors next to me. You know. They can hear me yelling at Rick the puppy. They can hear Stewie the one-eyed chihuahua barking. I mean, is, uh, you know what? 
I'll keep going. I might be able to show you a yard back up here. Some parts of this neighborhood, you can get a row home for, oh, $250,000, some spots $500,000. You might be able to buy a fixer-upper for maybe a hundred and twenty, depends. Check out, maybe not, maybe even more. This is a pretty big yard for this neighborhood uh, with a garage, very rare. Well, not very rare, because there's a whole bunch of garages. But there's not many garages in the neighborhood of Port Richmond. Predominantly Polish. Well, the one section near the river, predominantly Polish. Uh, Port Richmond, pretty segregated. I never really thought about it until I was an adult. But all the, all the churches were separated by your uh, ethnicity. Ooh, that's a tough one. Ethnicity. So I was Irish. I went to Nativity. If you were Italian, you would go to Mother of Divine Grace. If you were German, you would go to Our Lady Help of Christians. And if you were Polish, you would go to St. Alberts. And uh, now all the Catholic churches in the neighborhood have, sadly, They've gone away. There's only, I think, St. Adalbert's and Nativity and Mother of Divine Grace a church still. Nativity BVM School. Matter of fact, this is the old grade school. Uh, I went to, uh, matter of fact, right here. Right here, I was in kindergarten. This used to be the schoolyard. And uh, I was walking around here. And somebody came up to me. I was wearing a Michael Jackson button on my jacket, oh, wrong way, and, uh, I remember, oh, I forget the cafe, his first name was Chris, he goes, you know Santa Claus, is it real, and I was like, what, what, how dare you, and then he was trying to tell me Michael Jackson, uh, didn't like girls, and I was like, what, fucking makes out with Brooke Shields, you better get away from me with all your lies, who knew, that little, chi little child. Uh, hmm. Okay. So this is Campbell Square. Anyway, that's my old school, and that was my old school yard. Just go for memory lane. Uh, keep in mind, uh, we're going to be going to houses that are going to be selling for a million dollars. And this is Campbell Square. There is a little bit of a homeless problem in this park. Sometimes you get people camping on the steps of the churches here. Um, it's not, it's nothing like Kensington. It really isn't. It's, it's, uh, but you still have some issues you have to deal with. If you go down about a mile this way, you'll be at Kensington and Allegheny. And if you see a lot of videos of Philadelphia, a lot of people show you the Kensington section because of how horrible the crime is. So, this is about a mile away from Kensington. So you gotta deal with dribs and drabs of like crime. So, you have people staying in the park. And then, so what that means is you just make sure you lock your car doors. People, people test the door handles. So what they'll do is they'll just come up to your car and pull the door handle and if it opens up, what they'll do is usually they just rummage for, for, for uh, change and cash. You know, it's funny. I had my car broken into a few times in Center City. And uh, they don't take CDs. Nobody cares the CDs. I have books and books of CDs. And my car was broken into several times. And they, they would, I would see the CD book just thrown in the back seat. Nobody cared. All right, so we're at Allegheny and Edgemont. Let's go. Oh, stop stalking me. Every time I go around this neighborhood, I got a coal sister. Here we are. This 
is, oh, uh-oh, breaking Port Richmond news. Dr. Tresnowski, my childhood doctor. This was his doctor's office. Oh, oh, it, it, it expanded. It blew up. Holy God. So this was the doctor's office. When I was a kid, I would go see this guy as my doctor. I remember as a child, I grew, I was born in the set late 70s. So in the early 80s, when I grew up in Port Richmond, he would make house calls to my elderly neighbors. So Tresnowski's the guy's last name. He retired, the guy who was my doctor. And um, now the son, he, he runs the doctor's office still in the same neighborhood. Is that something? And then you got the funeral home. Uh, this is Donna's bar. I've only drink, drank here, but they have, like, if you want pierogies, it's a Polish joint. They make pierogies. It's a pretty good spot to try pierogies. I don't know. Uh, but the beers, if you like um, lager beers, I really think you should check out the Polish beers that they have at these bars. I always get something different every time because I never, you know, you never try them. They're not that bad. They're, and they're big. They're like, they're like 22 ounces. All right. This is Richmond Street. Um, back in the 50s, the 60s, maybe even the 70s, of, uh, this part of Port Richmond was full of uh, Polish shops. This was like a big Polish supermarket. Over there was a Polish diner. Um, this is a barber, a tattoo parlor. Pretty cool name. This is the one. This is a pretty cool record spot. They got some really good vinyl. Um, if so, if you like vinyl records, check out the laundrette. Look, the laun the laundry place. Whatever the hell, laundrette. Is that what it says? Oh boy. I almost got hit by a bike back there. Uh, so recently, uh, they just did this entire section. Uh, they redid the, the lights. You see how they have these old style street lights? Well, they have like a 1940, 1950 trolley that goes up and down the street. And I think the trolley should be returning to the tracks pretty soon. The trolleys, they got all this stuff, stuff done. They redid the entire trolley tracks. And as soon as they got done the project about the trolley tracks, they realized all the trolley cars had to get redone. And the project was like $80 million. So they weren't even sure if they were going to uh, um, redo the trolley car so they were they did all that work for nothing but then they realized it was worth it yeah hey, guys what are you doing it's the long rectangular one here we go i like this sign this is the this is the corner bar homemade soup hot sandwiches uh, they got chicken in the basket they also have i know you heard of black and white tv but they have color tv I haven't been in there for a while. They had like the world's biggest goldfish for a very long time inside the corner bar. Uh, I heard my first joke, like my first adult joke uh, inside the corner bar. Keith Daly, who was a guy who, owned, who ran this baseball organization called the Port Richmond Tigers. Keith Daly told me a Polish joke. And, you know, looking back on it, you know, stereotypical joke, it's not good. You shouldn't be doing that. But it changed my life. It made me want to be like a funny person. Like I was like, oh, I want to tell jokes. Jokes are awesome. I want to sit around in bars and tell jokes and make people laugh. Now look at this place. There's another tattoo shop. Vintage. Pretty nice looking. I haven't gotten a tattoo in a long time. You know, I find I find I get most of my tattoos when I'm batshit crazy, when I'm going for like a manic stage in life. All right. So we're, this is, again, we're still in Port Richmond. This is Richmond 
and we're coming up to Ann Street. This used to be an old video store. Video is unlimited. You can still see the sign. Signs of the past. Movie rentals, sports cards, video games. Oh, they sold appliances. They also had the dirty movies. I think they had the dirty movies. You know what? I don't know if they had the dirty movies. We'll never know. This used to be... Um, I'm, I'm almost certain this, this was the hardware store. And this hardware store was open for over a hundred years. And um, it, it closed sometime in like 2010, I think. But what they also sold here at the hardware store besides like hammer and nails is they would sell fishing bait because people would go down to the Delaware River and go fishing. And uh, it, it closed. Oh! Oh, no, you are not. Freet Brackerts in Port Richmond? Oh, no, this is bad news. I can't go in here yet. I got to come back. So Creep Brackerts is this amazing record store in Fishtown. They got a lot of punk rock records. They even do punk shows. And... Oh no, the poor laundry mat. Oh no. Oh no. Oh me, my poor wallet. Oh, I'm so excited to come shopping here. Oh, the. Wow. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, oh, I love. I, oh, that's like the greatest thing that happened to Port Richmond. Um, I know they were inside. The, there's that record store was inside this place called the. Um, Uh, the the brewery. Uh, God damn it, Schmidt's Commons. It's called the Schmidt's Commons, and I know the rent the rent went up like crazy in there. So I, I heard that they were talking about moving to Port Richmond. I don't know if they closed down the one in Fishtown. It's another great record store. And like I said, they used to be a punk rock label. I think they still might put out punk rock albums occasionally. And uh, I, I, oh, I love that store. I love that store, and I love Long in the Tooth and Sampson Street. Um, both, they have a really good selection. That's what I like. I like a selection. This is I-95. Now, all of this has just been done recently, um, where they, um, Instead of it just being like an empty, it would just be the highway columns. And I think there was like some parking. There was nothing. There was no greenage. There was no. So what the city does is to cut off storm waste water. They, they built all these wells. And instead of having water like flood our sewer system, they come here and I don't know. They evaporate and they all this stuff, all this plant and all that plant life lives off of it and all the water coming off 95 comes down here so 95 doesn't get flooded and the streets don't get flooded underneath it's pretty it's it's neat, I guess so listen if you're this far, do me a favor please hit the like button, I really appreciate you watching this uh, if you can, please subscribe uh, I like doing these unedited scoots. Um, I explore and, uh, you know, whatever. Just, just you know, whatever. Yeah, okay, we got it. Um, <laughs> can you tell how uncomfortable I am at doing that part? So this used to be called Suicide Hill. And when we were kids, uh, my friend Mikey Food Stamp. Uh-oh. Whenever you hear Mikey Food Stamp, you can tell we were up to no good. We would get our, our bikes... And we would go up the top of this hill and we would ride our bikes down the hill right into Richmond Street. And we called it Suicide Hill because if, you know, you get hit by a car, you die. But the hill was steep. The hill came down to about here. So you really had no chance of stopping. Pretty dumb. Kids do dumb shit. We used to walk across the railroad bridge up here. As children, we would like tightrope walk 
above the railroad bridge there. Pause for a second, unpause. Sometimes people got the music blasting real loud out of their car, so I, I gotta stop. Or if I go into a store and they got music playing, I can't really record in there. Um, see, here's another one of those. This is a big one. The whole thing's a big drainage ditch. This is Lehigh Avenue. You go down here a bit, uh, you have Stock's Bakery. Stock's Bakery is known for their pound cake. Uh, their pound cake is like, seriously, you, you, it's one of the few things people you like. You got a cheesesteak, but then there's like other things we have, like the water ice. But then Stock's Pound Cake is another like legend. Uh, then you also got the Green Rock Tavern, which is down there on Lehigh Avenue. I host Quizzo there once in a blue moon. Uh, it seems like a friendly spot. Uh, whenever I'm there doing Quizzo, the people are always nice. And uh, I know uh, my, my one of my favorite punk rock bands, Lime Cell. They used to hang out at the Green Rock Tavern. So if a bar is good enough for Lime Cell, it's good enough for you. So now we're getting into this area. It's Fort Richmond still. It's still considered Fort Richmond if you have a map. You tell me, I'm going to tell you. You ask me where I'm at right now, like, ah, I'm at the beginning of Fishtown. Not really, but everybody has their own type of map in Philadelphia. That's usually wrong. But you see all this highway, this whole stretch of highway, where it's like a trail now. It's it, This was under construction for years. It sucked. I had a friend who lived around here. And I would have to find a parking spot. And then I used to always get guaranteed parking underneath 95. And then that's the, the, that went away because they were doing construction all the time. You know, I with all this puddles of water, wouldn't that draw, like, mosquitoes? Also, up here... So, remember, I told you I'm going to show you million-dollar houses, which are right over there. Um, I'll do the houses we'll end at that graffiti pier okay so right here underneath this new stretch of parking there are encampments of homeless people just like living here oh I mean that's what homeless people do and If you see, it's not uncommon to find RVs and all types of trucks parked under here. And there's some. So all that, you know, the homeless encampment and all that stuff is here. And if you cross Richmond Street, this is Richmond and Cumberland Street.
you can see you can see their new real estate they're building right here now these houses on this side of this development they're going for I think six hundred thousand dollars maybe maybe seven hundred thousand dollars possibly <laughs> eight hundred thousand dollars and the way these houses are built are they're just they're really too thin houses right next to each other So it's a pretty cool little community. If you look at the houses, they got these little rows of homes. Really beautiful. And uh, the houses on this last stretch of uh, street oh look there's mr softy um th these houses go for over a million dollars but they come there, there's no property in the city that you're this close to the delaware river not that i know of you beat these views this would be a great spot to watch um we do fireworks on the fourth of july this is probably a good spot to watch them now since there's no uh you don't have to worry about traffic on the way out actually it's probably a good spot yeah if you can get in here yeah so a million dollars would you pay a million dollars to live here just remember we saw all that, all those tents that was just a few blocks away. I think you'd be okay. Where would you move? Now, I don't know the obvious answer is out of the city, but that's not an option. So you live in Philadelphia. Where would you live where it would you would feel the most safe? I think my parents live in the far northeast is pretty good. I think that's it. I'm trying to think of more answers. Over there, that's Graffiti Pier. And uh, that's owned by the city of Philadelphia. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go over there. Or maybe not. I don't know. But that's like a place where people take Instagram photos and you're allowed the graffiti there. Um, people, you know, go fishing at the end of the pier. I guess you can go fishing here if you live here, right? Who's stopping you? One thing that's happening in the next few years, uh, they're doing construction 
at uh, Graffiti Pier and they're going to make it more of a public park. Like, you can go there now. Not really supposed to. It's kind of trespassy. But, uh... Oh, this is stupid. Oh, it's all muddy. You dumb idiot. You dumb jerk. Oh, I hate you and your dumb ideas. <sighs> yeah, if I was going to live here, I would probably want to live closer towards the river. I wouldn't mind living here. I can't imagine leaving the city. It's just so, such a part of who I am. But, uh... Sometimes I can see leave. Oh my god, good gravy. <laughs> Look how dumb this is. You see this wall? So this is how you get the graffiti pier. Yeah. Ain't, if this ain't the biggest waste of time, energy, Shit, right? Boom. Why why look how big that wall is? It's ridiculous. So say you get back to graffiti pier. It rained this morning, so uh, it sucks getting back here in the morning. Or sucks when it come back here when it's wet. Can't really scoot. It's humid. It's extremely humid back here. This is the last great late puddle that I will pass. I think it's always good to go this way. And this is it. We made it. Graffiti Pier. How sketchy would I say it's at Graffiti Pier? I would say you got to keep your wits about you a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. There are some bad people that hang down here, but there's some good people. And like I said, graffiti is completely legal here. And uh, I kind of dig it. I like the uh, legal graffiti. And then you get world-renowned artists. Uh, there's a guy, Elias, who paints down here, and he's a mural artist who gets paid thousands of dollars. To, to, he traveled to Spain, and uh, world-renowned artists come down here with graffiti pieces. And um, it's a... By the way, if you want to sound like an old person, make sure you call them graffiti pieces. The graffiti community... This used to be an old railroad pier owned by uh, the Reading Railroad. And I think it was a, they would deliver coal, if you look above me. There is a railroad track, and on that railroad track, trains would go and they would dump coal 
in uh, a boat at the end of the river. And that's, and then I think this shut down in like the 70s or 80s. And it's been kind of abandoned space for a while. As a kid, I would, I don't, I wouldn't hang here necessarily, but I would hang at other parts of the abandoned railroad. Yeah, see, people go up there. If I had a dollar for every time I came down here and saw somebody doing a photo shoot or doing like a makeshift rap video, I would have hundreds of thousands of dollars. I like it. I don't know. I think it's good to have a space. They just did this thing on South Street where the old Jim Stakes was. They're making graffiti uh, legal on certain walls. And what that does, uh, I think it, I think it, what it does is it shows how talented some of the street artists in Philadelphia are. So, yeah, so the city owns this ground, and they're going to fix up the park, I hear, but they're not going to fix it up too much, but, like, big holes like that will get filled in, structures, maybe, maybe patch that up so it doesn't fall on someone's head. definitely doing a rap video so let's go over here see some of them you just go like that guy up there I know how he did it it's just so terrifying to go up there he did that in 21 so that lasts a long time most pieces don't last that long. Yeah, that's... It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like this guy. He does like a psychedelic Simpson. He came down here one year. He just did a bunch of pieces. There we go. Oh, oh no. We ruined the music video. Fantastic. There we are. I like that. I like that one a lot. I don't know why I like it. Reminds me of the Take On Me video. Uh, I would love to shoot a music video. I bet you I'd be. 
every time I come down here, I say this. I go, I want to make my own rat video. Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. For... Oh, man. For a long time, there was a guy... Uh, living up there. In the... Uh, in the top of Graffiti Pier. And... Uh, he lived there for years. I don't think I ever really... I might have pointed it out in one video. I didn't want anybody ever bothering them. There are some YouTube videos of like somebody discovering his house. And, uh, um, and they didn't do anything to it, but you could, you could find it if you look for it. And, uh, I know that guy, he, he does like something with recovery. He helps people with recovery, so he's a good dude, so. Sorry, his house burnt down. And this is it. This is the end of the graffiti pier. Ooh, new swing. Not really a good view. Just another swing. Those are the new houses I was just scooting in. It's not bad. They, they, these houses completely destroyed the view of Center City that we used to have at Graffiti Pier. Yeah, people go fish. Oh, wow. be the last one. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be the last one I rode down here in Graffiti Pier. My favorite part of the rap video is when that middle-aged white guy rode by with his scooter. I really enjoy that. There you go. Uh, although... You know, I don't know how many people can say this. This is a true fact about me. And uh, just so you know, I may be the only person in the history of crunk music, the history of crunk, to be in a crunk video wearing a kilt. I was in Duke Deuce. There's a song, Duke Deuce, WTF. And uh, if cursing offends you, don't, don't, don't look it up. It's pretty offensive. Uh, anyway, I saw Duke Deuce at Made in America, which is a festival Jay-Z Jay -Z does every year. And I just hung out there for, for two days. It was it was kind of horrible, but it was all right. I had an okay time. Um, but, the, but the highlight was uh, watching Duke Deuce for about 15 minutes, and he just blew me away. And I saw Duke Deuce walking around. Oh, we're dead. We're dead. I saw Duke Deuce walking around the Made in America festival. And I said, yo, I got to tell you something. You got a new fan. You got a new fan in me. And he, I didn't know he was filming at the time, but he was filming at the time. And I got to be in his video, WTF, wearing a kilt. Uh-oh. Oh, no. That's not a good sign. All right, let's get back to the car. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Look how big the wall. 
Look how big that wall is. They built that giant wall and you could just walk right through. If that ain't the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Then again. Yeah, who cares? You know what? I'm going to wrap this up here. And maybe I can make two scoops for the price of one. I think that was enough. You saw the million dollar homes. You saw the homeless encampments. You saw Graffiti Pier. You saw the new record store. And... Oh, you're about to see me get hit by a car. What do you think of that? So if you like this video, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out my merch. Get yourself a... a Ben Franklin, get take a penny, leave a penny t-shirt. Get yourself the soon-to-be-going-away no-good-nick t-shirt. And, uh, that's enough, right? I have a Patreon. Uh, I would like to travel more. If, if I have a little bit more money in, it could be easier for me to travel. So if you could buy a t-shirt, sign up for Patreon. Uh, you can book me on Cameo. I can do birthday greetings. I can do fantasy football lineups. I can make fun of your fantasy football team. I can do whatever you need, right? And uh, all that stuff. And uh, click the join button if you want access to all my live streams. But don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll sail with you later. Let's see if we can find one more cool thing. Let's get a little hashtag bonus bullshit. A little extra. I know it's been way too much already, but I think we need a little extra. A little cream with the sugar. By the way, I could never put sugar in my coffee. Could you put sugar in your coffee? It just it makes it too sweet. Look at this. Ooh, what's this? This is a school. It's crazy. This is like a little tiny section near Port Richmond. I always get lost looking for this one mural. And I think it's right up here. Here it is. That's actually the quickest I've ever found it. This is a oh way. This is a little bonus bullshit. This is raccoon eating a pretzel. And uh, it's pretty good. I like that one. Well, make sure you hit like and subscribe, and I'll say I'll wait you later.